Thank you for joining us for this presentation on Jean Watson's Theory of Human Caring and Caring Science. Dr. Watson's career is full of significant accomplishments. She has written hundreds of articles on caring and many books. Her first book was Nursing, the Philosophy and Science of Caring. This book speaks to the different aspects of caring, which had been invisible until her research brought them to light. She has received many awards and honors, including the Fetzer Institute Norman Cousins Award, the International Kellogg Fellowship in Australia, the Fulbright Research Award in Sweden, the Hildebrand Center for Compassion in Medicine Award, the Academy Integrative Medicine and Healing Award, and the Japanese International Society of Caring and Peace Chair. She holds 15 honorary doctoral degrees, including 12 international honorary doctorates. Her work is used by hospitals, clinical nurses, and academic programs throughout the world. It is a guide for transformative models of caring and healing practices in many settings. Dr. Watson has said that the phenomenon and practice of human caring and healing are the essence of nursing practice and foundational to sustaining life itself. Dr. Watson was born Margaret Jean Harmon on June 10, 1940, in the small town of Welsh, West Virginia. She was the youngest of eight, having four brothers and three sisters. She remembers there being very little to do growing up in a town so small it had only one tennis court. The only activities available were through church and school. In school, she did well academically, and she was involved in many activities, including cheerleading, and even though she doesn't remember it well, the nursing club. When she was about 16, or a junior in high school, her father suffered a massive heart attack and passed away. She states that this event changed the direction of her life. Where her plans were to go to a university in Florida, she instead went to nursing school. Her experiences as a youngest sibling and the death of her father made her much more observant of the emotions and human interactions of others. Although she attended a very reputable nursing school, she found that the curriculum was centered on the physical medicine of curing illness. There was no attention to the philosophical or human dimensions of nursing care. So this was an area she would focus on after nursing school. After obtaining her nursing diploma, she married her husband, Douglas. They lived on campus as he continued his legal education, and she began her first nursing job as an operating room nurse. While she was gaining nursing experience, she found that her relationships with patients were very meaningful, personal, and rewarding. Eventually, she and her husband moved to Colorado to be near his family and to pursue their professional aspirations. She went back to school and obtained her bachelor's in science in 1964. Then she went on to earn a master's degree in psychiatric and mental health nursing. While working as a psychiatric nurse, she was able to more fully connect with her patients in meaningful interactions learning what was happening with them beyond just the diagnosis. She discovered that she was very interested in all the complexities of humanity and began to pursue her PhD. During this time, she traveled around the world to learn more about the phenomenon of being materially poor, but spiritually rich and vice versa. In 1973, she received a PhD in educational psychology and counseling. She went on to continue her research on caring and fine-tuning her theory on caring as she taught nursing students at the University of Colorado. In 1997, a freak golfing accident caused her to lose her left eye, and then in 1998, her husband and partner in life, Douglas, committed suicide. She then found herself alone with two adult daughters and five grandchildren. She stated, that through the process of integrating these wounds into her life, she was able to fully experience her theory through the compassionate care of her family, loving nurse friends and colleagues, giving even greater meaning to her life's work. In 2012, she retired from the University of Colorado 
and has since focused on the Watson Caring Inst Science Institute, which she founded in 2010. The philosophical underpinnings for Jean Watson's theory of human caring and caring science has been broken into a worldview, philosophies and disciplines that have contributed, and theory development that brought it all together. Watson's philosophy and science of caring is concerned with how nurses express and care to their patients. Her theory stresses humanistic aspects of nursing as they intertwine with scientific knowledge and nursing practice. According to Watson's theory, she believes a holistic approach to healthcare is central to the practice of caring in nursing. The theory of human caring was developed between 1975 and 1979 while Jean Watson was teaching. The theory emerged from her own views of nursing combined and informed by her doctoral studies in educational, clinical, and social psychology. The work was also influenced by Jean's involvement with the academic nursing curriculum. Beginning with the question of relationship between human caring and nursing, this initial work laid the foundation for this theory and ultimately is what influenced Jean Watson's theory. Watson desired to bring meaning and focus to nursing as an emerging discipline and her early writing identified 10 character factors that served as the foundation and framework for the science and practice of nursing. The original curative factors grounded in philosophy, science, art, and caring evolved into the theory of human caring. She described her work as a framework and also included personal experiences in regard to professional and personal healing after traumatic events in her life which influenced her theory. Watson often refers to Florence Nightingale's work being an influential theorist in her theoretical framework. Watson's theory was also influenced by the sacred, the ancient, and the contemporary yin emergence, holism, energy fields, waves, energy, healing, artistry, evolution, and the transpersonal. Her ideas were drawn from many sources, including Eastern philosophy, 20th century artist Alex Gray, philosophical ideas of Hegel, Kierkegaard, Marcel, Rogers, philosophical works of Erickson, Lazarus, Maslow, and Seeley, and the ideas of other traditional conceptualists like Leninger, Henderson, Nightingale, Hall, and Gruder. With the help of Maslow's work, the theory categorizes aspects such as rest, activity, and sexuality as parts of human needs, and that is pivotal in the nursing profession. It thus can be concluded that various disciplines aided Watson's work as a theorist which includes psychology, philosophy, and nursing science. Her theory was influenced by many philosophers. She felt that nurses should have a broader knowledge and understanding of the philosophies embraced in her model. Erickson influenced the shaping of the theory model, and Maslow's hierarchy guided categorization of human needs. These philosophical underpinnings were critical to the development of the theory and creation of the caring model. By embracing the Eastern philosophy, Watson through her model stated that nurses are tasked with creating the healing environment with the help of intentional use of consciousness. The theory of human caring and caring science has four main components. The first is caring. Through the looking glass of Jean Watson's caring science theory, caring is a universal and mysterious force of energy that transcends time and encompasses a deep respect for the wonders and mysteries of life. Caring is a way of displaying one's humanity through being present, attentive, and intentional. The second is actual caring occasions, which are made up of transpersonal caring relationships between nurses and patients to help patients achieve harmony between mind, body, and soul.
The third aspect is caring needs. Nursing is centered around addressing the patient's caring needs specific to the human experience, as outlined in the 10 Caritas processes, which must be addressed by nurses to maintain the utmost respect for the humanity of their patient. And finally, contributions to mankind. Healthcare providers can make social, moral, and scientific contributions to mankind and affect human development through the caring science. The key assumptions of Dr. Watson's caring science include the wholeness, unity, and connectedness of the human person. The nature of existence forms a theoretical foundation and unified worldview of human caring that is relational and ethical. Integrating morality and the nature of the human existence into science suggests a spiritual aspect of the human person that is not only possible, but essential for science itself, humanity, and society. And finally, multiple diverse ways of knowing, including various forms of evidence. The meta paradigm concepts include person, which is a valued being to be cared for, respected, nurtured, understood, and assisted. Health, which is unity and harmony within the mind, body, and soul. Nursing, which is a human science of persons and human health. Illness experiences that are mediated by professional, personal, scientific, aesthetic, and ethical human care transactions. And environment, which doesn't have a specific definition, but the 10 character factors necessitate an environment that is supportive, protective, and or corrective, mental, physical, societal, and spiritual. The major concepts of caring science theory are caring science, actual caring occasions, transpersonal caring relationships, and the Terran character factors or caritas processes. Caring science is an evolving philosophical ethical field of study that is grounded in the discipline of nursing and informed by related fields. Actual caring occasions are the process of human caring manifested by actions and choices by the nurse and individual. Transpersonal caring relationships are an intersubjective human to human relationship in which the nurse affects and is affected by the person of the other. Both are fully present in the moment and feel a union with the other. They share a phenomenal field that becomes part of the life history of both. And the caritas processes are universals of human caring and love that guide the caring healing practitioner leadership principles for patients, nurses, and healthcare systems. Watson's 10 character factors are humanistic, altruistic system of values, faith and hope, sensitivity to self and others, developing, helping, trusting, caring relationship, expressing positive and negative feelings and emotions, creative, individualized, problem-solving, caring process, transpersonal teaching and learning, supportive, protective, and or corrective, mental, physical, societal, and spiritual environment, human needs assistance, and existential phenomenologic spiritual forces. Watson's 10 Caritas processes are, one, cultivating the practice of loving kindness and equanimity to self and others. Two, being authentically present, enabling, sustaining, and honoring the faith, hope, and deep belief system and the inner subjective life world of self and other. Three, cultivation of one's own spiritual practices and transpersonal self going beyond ego self. Four, developing and sustaining a helping, trusting, caring relationship. Five, being present to and supportive of the expression of positive and negative feelings. Six, creative use of self and all ways of knowing as part of the caring process, 
engage in the artistry of caritas nursing. Seven, engage in genuine teaching learning experience that attends to unify of being and subjective meaning, attempting to stay within the other's frame of reference. Eight, creating a healing environment at all levels. Nine, administering sacred nursing acts of caring healing by tending to basic human needs. And 10, opening and attending to spiritual and mysterious and existential unknowns of life and death. As Jean Watson said, caring is the essence of nursing. Here you can see a diagram of Watson's caring science theory model. Today, Watson's theory can be applied to everyday nursing practice. Jean Watson's theory of human caring is a grand theory. It focuses on authentically caring about the whole patient. This means caring about the patient's mind, body, and spirit so that the healing process can continue. It is both an art and a science. By following Watson's carative factors, nurses are able to care for their patients as a whole, not just another filled bed or number. Nursing administrators can also apply Watson's theory to everyday work as well by following the carative factors. The guidelines in place are the 10 carative factors that outline exactly what a nurse needs to demonstrate in order to successfully care for a patient and allow for optimal care and healing of the patient. They are as follows. It begins with formation of a humanistic, altruistic system of values, installation of faith and hope, cultivation of sensitivity, development of caring, trusting relationship, promotion and acceptance of positive or negative feelings, creative problem solving, teaching and learning, provision for a supportive, protective and or corrective mental, physical, societal and spiritual environment, assistance with gratification and allowance for existential, phenomenological, spiritual forces. There are facilities that utilize Jean Watson's theory and 10 carative factors that are to be applied to everyday practice. An example case in clinical practice would be Brigham and Women's Hospital in Massachusetts, which has been recognized as providing exceptional commitment to caring practices, and they have become a Watson Caring Science Institute affiliate. To become an affiliate, an organization must demonstrate commitment to integrating caring science within practice and policies, seeking to transform and broaden the notion of health and healing for staff as well as patients, families, and communities. A brief patient case would be that of an 82-year-old Hispanic-speaking male admitted with chest pain. The nurse first would use love and kindness by staying with the patient and providing interpreter services. Provide a therapeutic environment with privacy and comfort the patient. By establishing a relationship early on, the nurse provides a connection. The nurse effectively communicates with interpreter and the patient allowing the patient to ask any questions and voice any concerns. Support the patient's feelings and cultural differences while caring for the individual. Teach the patient and learn with the patient. Provide time and allow the patient to ask questions, encourage questions, and patient involvement. The nurse should create a healing environment, as mentioned earlier, such as a quiet room, dim lighting, with an interpreter to allow the patient to voice questions, concerns, and to fully engage with the treating nurse. Of course, the nurse would assist the patient with basic needs, such as bathing, changing of clothes, and providing privacy. The nurse in this brief patient scenario would have followed the 10 carative factors from beginning to end to fulfill patient's needs in a caring, compassionate way to allow an optimal healing environment. Ozan, Akumas, and Lash tested the theory of human caring um, in a study that they did with a 23-year-old infertility patient. They studied the effects of a caring relationship between a nurse 
and this infertility patient and described and evaluated the nurse's process through Watson's 10 carative factors and the patient's response. Through all of the carative factors, the patient was able to regain hope for the future and went on to continue treatment after having um, a negative result initially. It was caring, compassion, love, trust, and hope delivered through the use of Watson's framework that allowed this to be possible. Dr. Watson's theory of human caring and caring science is both simple and complex. The simple portion of the theory are the 10 simple carative factors which create a guide for successful nursing care and can be applied in any situation. In fact, many nurses don't realize that they are already practicing many of these carative processes. The theory's complexity lies in that it affects the entire patient environment from the patient spaces in the facility to their home care and to the characteristics of the people hired to care for them. It is not focused solely on the patient, but on the interconnectedness of the patient with their nurse and how both are affected by this relationship. Contemporary nursing practice is focused on creating caring environments for nurses, patients, and families within today's complex healthcare organizations. The theory of caring has become a major part of hospitals gaining magnet status and has become the theory of choice for direct care nurses returning to caring values. The theory of human caring is based on Watson's theory, which is known to specify the relationships between different concepts. It was shaped by Erickson, who was the first person to introduce the term caritas in the caring science. The mid-range theory states that the primary essence of nursing and that of professional nurses is to ensure that the best environment is provided and which enhances the healing process. Other influences on this Theory are Florence Nightingale and various philosophers and psychologists. The primary concept is to offer philosophical ethical foundation and that would enable a nurse to offer nursing care. The four critical concepts to understanding and applying Watson's theory are carative factors, transpersonal caring, caring occasions, and healing modalities and this is how they relate to the grand theory. The following is a case study of Mr. Hamilton who has been admitted to the hospital with an infection. He is a biology teacher and has to teach school-aged children. Watch how his nurse uses Caritas to provide person-centered care. Hello, my name is Nurse B and I am here today to show you how to apply Jean Watson's carative factors. First, I start my day by reflecting and centering myself to cultivate loving kindness. I promote self-care by running and exercising every morning before work. I go to work intending to use every opportunity for bring authentic caring to my relationships with staff and patients. Hello. Jan, Mary Francis, Sarah, Perry and Adrian. I hope you have a great day. I have been assigned Mr. Nick Hamilton who is suffering from an unusual deforming infection and has been having difficulty coping with a change in body image. Mr. Hamilton has been having problems coping. I empathize with what Mr. Nick Hamilton must be feeling and consider how I might be able to help him with his emotional, spiritual and physical needs. Before I enter the room I think of the first two carative factors. Practicing loving kindness and being authentically present. I take a few seconds to be still and center myself in the caring moment. I keep myself open to receive information. Hello, my name is Nurse B. How are you feeling today? I am not feeling very well. I notice that Mr. Hamilton has his head covered and is facing away from me. I have a feeling that he is suffering from despair. 
I decide to ask Mr. Hamilton open-ended questions and attempt to have him open up to me about his feelings so that we can work towards developing trust. I have been told you are having problems with your self-image. Can you tell me about this? Just look at me. How can I go out in public or go to work looking like this? Oh my, poor Mr. Nick Hamilton. He does look awful. I must be accepting and not display my feelings of horror at his appearance. I will allow him to express his negative feelings. This must be very difficult for you Mr. Hamilton, one can understand how hard it would be to go out and work. I will ask Mr. Hamilton about his work, recognizing that he has other concerns than just physical, he also has psychosocial needs. I hope that this will help develop trust. What do you do for a living Mr. Nick Hamilton? Why, that is so nice of you to ask. I am a teacher so you can see why it is difficult to get up in front of a classroom. The children laugh. Oh, yes that must be hard unless you are teaching biology. Oh my. Ha 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 ha. That is so funny ha 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 ha. Mr. Hamilton and I just had a caring moment. We spend the next several minutes talking about his job teaching biology. Mr. Nick Hamilton I have your antibiotic injection. This should help your infection so you will feel better. It can also affect your appetite. How are you eating? I have not been eating very much. The only foods that sound good are carrots and vegetables. Mr. Hamilton protein and dairy are very important to fight infection. I will see if we can have a nutritionist come speak with you. Thank you. I would like that. I have used the scientific problem-solving method for decision-making by providing skilled interventions to assist Mr. Nick Hamilton. In addition I have provided teaching by informing Mr. Nick Hamilton about nutrition and providing services to improve diet. Here is your injection. Mr. Hamilton and I have developed a trusting relationship. I contemplate how I can help improve his environment. I provide sunlight and color to his room. I assist Mr. Hamilton to the bathroom and make his bed. As I leave the room our eyes meet and we share a caring moment. The next day I hear that Mr. Hamilton is doing much better. I go to his room. Mr. Hamilton you look like a new man, you must be feeling better. Yes I do feel better I will be going home today. Thank you for your help. Mr. Nick Hamilton's recovery is amazing. I recognize that anything is possible. I hope that this helps you understand Gene Watson's theory of caring and how it applies to the caring moment. Reflection on your actions and centering yourself to be present in the moment can help create the caring moment. By combining caring and love we have characters. Please have a caring and spiritual day. Thank you for your time. Characters. We hope you have enjoyed this presentation on Gene Watson's The Theory of Human Caring and Caring Science. Thank you for watching.